China boosts the world's largest fishing industry, a powerhouse providing seafood to millions across the globe. But beneath the surface of this massive industry lies a disturbing reality. The reports of severe human rights abuses aboard Chinese fishing vessels are rampant, with accusations ranging from labor trafficking to wage theft and criminal neglect. Meet Christian Jensen, a 25-year-old Indonesian who once worked abroad a Chinese squid vessel named Fu-18. Uh, Kalau masalah minum uh, awalnya itu kita dikasih uh, ada pembagian, tapi setelah habis itu nggak ada lagi kita minumnya dari air laut yang disuling. Nah, masalah tidur sendiri uh, kalau lagi pas lagi musim ikan uh, tidurnya itu paling sedikit itu paling lama itu 4 jam, paling sedikit 2 jam. Itu hampir semua sih yang Anak-anak BK itu hampir semua kena kekerasan waktu di kerja di kapal. Kita ini dianggaplah kita kayak binatang diperlakukan seperti itu. For Jensen, the ordeal was so harrowing that he vowed never to return to fishing. But his story is just one of many. Ya, itu yang paling menyedihkan ketika teman kami meninggal ya, almarhum Fadil. Jadi uh, itu sangat, sangat merasa sangat terpukul sekali. Sorry. Sorry. In September of 2019, Jensen's colleague Fadel left severely ill. His body swelled and he begged the vice captain for medical help. Instead, he was given over-the-counter painkillers and told he couldn't leave because his contract hadn't ended. Fadil's condition worsened and tragically he passed away on the ship. The captain claimed that Fadil's parent had consented to his burial at sea. A Chinese deckhand secretly recorded the burial and helped Jensen smuggle these images off the ship when it finally docked nine months later. Fadel's story was publicly recorded in 2023 by the Outlaw Ocean Project, an American non-for-profit journalism group. The investigation shed light on the grave human rights abuses within China's distant water fishing fleet. So the China investigation focused on four regions. So Chinese fishing vessels along here, especially high seas near the Gambia, so West Africa was one. And then, so what we found uh, definitively is that the Chinese fleet is engaged in pretty severe labor abuses, trafficking, wage theft criminal neglect, people starving to death, people getting diseases they shouldn't, undocumented workers being held captive, a variety of human rights concerns. Are we on the 18th? So this is the Way U-18, the ship that we are investigating, and it's nighttime, and it's fishing, and it's got its bulbs going. I was interested in the Way U-18 because we had a dead body. We knew the fatality was an Indonesian. We knew the fatality had suspicions around it because the conditions of the body. We quickly found out there was violence on board, there was malnutrition on board, there was captivity, begging to be able to leave, not being able to leave, begging for medical care, not being provided it, etc. These ships like the VU-18 can stay at sea for up to two years without returning to shore, creating a perilous environment for them. 
using advanced technology such as infrared uh, drones, the Outlaw Ocean Project documented the harsh realities faced by these laborers, often working under conditions tantamount to modern slavery. The scale of China's fishing industry is formidable, but it comes at a tragic cost. Until greater accountability is demanded from regulators, seafood companies, and consumers like us, the seafood we eat may be tainted with suffering of those forced to work under inhumane conditions. Please, for those of you who are watching this video, if you are looking for work and considering this type of work, please be considered. If you know someone that is considering this type of work, please share this video with them. It's best that they not go in this type of work for short-term gains and instead stay with their friends and family in Indonesia with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed them. Thank you very much for watching this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.